SpaceX's Starbase facility is in full swing with preparations for the second Starship test flight, which could happen anytime soon. SpaceX successfully performed a Super Heavy Booster 9 static fire test a week ago to prepare the vehicle for flight. The August 25th test was the second static fire test SpaceX has performed on Booster 9. Booster 9's first static fire test was cut short on August 6, when four of the booster's 33 engines shut down prematurely, prompting a test abort and the shutdown of all remaining 29 engines. After the second test, SpaceX stated that all 33 engines successfully ignited for the full test duration, although two shut down prematurely. The company did not state if that test was sufficient to proceed with a launch attempt or if they needed another test. The booster stabilization pins on the orbital launch mount were removed recently. These pins are used to stabilize the booster as it is raised or lowered on the launch mount. The removal of stabilization pins suggests that SpaceX has no intention of lifting Booster 9 from the launch mount and that the next time they expect to see the booster leave the launch mount will be during flight. Booster 9's partner, Starship 25, continues to be prepared for flight at the Rocket Garden. Teams finished installing the thermal protection system tiles on the nose cone lift points of the ship, and they are currently preparing the vehicle for rollout to the launch site. Once Ship 25 arrives at the launch site, it will be stacked atop Booster 9, allowing for fit checks with the hot staging ring and the ship quick disconnect, which has been moved higher on the tower to accommodate the added height of the installed ring. The full stack will be followed by a wet dress rehearsal, which will involve fully loading propellants into the booster and ship and providing a launch day rehearsal for the controllers. The wet dress rehearsal is the final pre-launch test before the Starship takes to the skies. CEO Elon Musk recently posted an X that SpaceX is getting ready for the next Starship launch, and it will happen soon. As per the latest Mariner Hazard warning notice from the U.S. Coast Guard, the launch is scheduled for no earlier than September 8. The Federal Communications Commission recently granted SpaceX a license to conduct an experimental orbital demonstration and recovery test of its Starship rocket. However, we still have no information on when the FAA will award SpaceX a launch license. The FAA is currently reviewing the final mishap investigation report from the April launch, which SpaceX recently submitted to the agency. After studying the report, the FAA will determine what fixes SpaceX needs to make to receive authorization to launch again. Teams are still in the process of installing the newly delivered Deluge System water storage tank. The Deluge System's storage capacity and water discharge rate will increase once the tank is fully operational. We can expect deluge system water discharge tests in the coming days to evaluate the performance of the newly fitted tank. The orbital tank farm recently received some major upgrades that will allow faster and colder loading of propellants into the Starship launch vehicle. Two new heat exchangers were installed on the liquid methane side of the tank farm, and four heat exchangers were installed on the liquid oxygen side of the tank farm in the last few days. Orbital Tank Farm previously had four active liquid oxygen heat exchangers and two active liquid methane heat exchangers. With the installation of the newly delivered heat exchangers, the methane side now has four, and the oxygen side has eight heat exchangers. A new liquid oxygen pump was installed a few weeks ago, and last week, we saw the installation of a brand new liquid methane pump. The pumps will speed up the process of loading cryogenic propellants into the launch vehicle. SpaceX continues reshaping the production site to create the space needed for the expansion of the Star Factory. The company is currently removing large structures that get in the way of the expansion. Two of the three large production tents have been completely disassembled lately, and the third tent will be taken apart soon. These tents are used for the production and welding of ring sections and the storage of Raptor engines and other Starship components. The more substantial and permanent Star Factory building will shortly take the place of the tents. You can see the progress of the Star Factory expansion in this aerial image provided by RGV Aerial Photography. As per various sources, when complete, the Star Factory will be about 18 meters tall, 250 meters long, and 120 meters wide. It will have a floor area of about 28,000 square meters. The midbay, where Starship ring sections and test tanks were once stacked, was knocked off last Sunday morning. SpaceX no longer requires the mid-bay as they use the high bay for all ship and test tank stacking operations. The nose cone of Ship 31 was stacked on its payload section inside the high bay on Thursday morning. The ship is now two out of six sections tall. Inside the mega bay, teams recently completed the stacking of Super Heavy Booster 12. Booster 12 will be moved to the Massey's test site for cryogenic proof tests in the near future. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Following the success of the Chandrayaan-3 moon mission, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is gearing up for another exciting space mission. 
The Aditya L1 Solar Observatory is scheduled to launch on September 2 at 6.20 a.m. UTC atop a PSLV rocket from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. Aditya L1 will be the first space-based Indian mission to study the sun. The spacecraft will initially head to low Earth orbit, where its various systems will get an in-space checkout from the mission team. If all goes according to plan, the spacecraft will gradually break free of Earth's gravitational pull and make its way to Earth's Sun Lagrange Point 1, a gravitationally stable spot about 1.5 million kilometers away. Once at L1, the Aditya spacecraft will use its seven science instruments to study the Sun and space weather. Four payloads will directly study the Sun, and the remaining three will carry out in situ studies of particles and fields at L1, thus providing important scientific studies of the effect of solar activities in the interplanetary medium. The Sun constantly influences the Earth with radiation, heat, and a constant flow of particles and magnetic fields. The solar wind and other explosive solar events like the coronal mass ejection can trigger a magnetic disturbance near the Earth, affecting the functioning of space assets. A satellite placed in the halo orbit around the L1 point has the major advantage of continuously viewing the Sun without any occultation. This will provide a greater advantage in observing solar activities and their real-life effect on space weather. The data collected by the spacecraft could help researchers better understand the dynamics of solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and could also shed light on why the sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona, about 1 million degrees Celsius, is so much hotter than its surface, which is just around 5,500 degrees Celsius. India's launch of the $45 million Aditya l mission will follow closely on the heels of the nation's Chandrayaan-3 mission to the moon. Chandrayaan-3's Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover have been exploring the moon's south polar region since the successful landing on August 23. On August 27, ISRO posted an update on X regarding one of Chandrayaan-3's payloads called the CHAST, or Chandra's Surface Thermophysical Experiment. The experiment used 10 individual sensors to measure temperature profiles of lunar south pole soil at different depths, marking the first such profile for the lunar south pole. Its data show that the temperature on the surface of the moon is 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, but the temperature drops to minus 10 degrees Celsius 80 millimeters below the lunar surface. The temperature variation indicates that the moon's topsoil is a powerful thermal insulator and adds credence to the idea that it can be used to build habitats for humans to shield them from frigid conditions and harmful radiation. On August 29, ISRO announced that the laser-induced breakdown spectroscope instrument on board the Pragyan rover unambiguously confirmed the presence of sulfur on the lunar surface near the South Pole through the first ever in situ measurements. ISRO said the rover's spectroscope also detected aluminum, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, manganese, silicon, and oxygen, as expected. The space agency added that the search for hydrogen on the moon's South Pole region is underway. A SpaceX Dragon spacecraft arrived at the International Space Station on August 27, ferrying a new crew of astronauts to the orbiting laboratory. SpaceX's Crew-7 mission for NASA lifted off atop a brand-new SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on August 26. The mission carried four astronauts representing four different space agencies to the ISS on board the Crew Dragon Endurance spacecraft. As its name suggests, Crew-7 is SpaceX's seventh operational mission to the space station for NASA and the company's 11th human space flight overall. A little more than 12 minutes after launch, the Dragon spacecraft carrying the astronauts separated from the Falcon 9's upper stage and began its journey toward the orbiting laboratory. After a nearly 30-hour-long journey, the Crew Dragon capsule docked at the space station's Harmony module. More than an hour later, the crew's seven astronauts opened the hatch between their Dragon spacecraft and the ISS to join the seven astronauts already aboard the station. All 11 astronauts then gathered for a short welcome ceremony to begin their joint mission. During their six-month stay at the space station, the crew's seven astronauts will undertake important scientific missions aimed at advancing human space exploration and improving life on Earth. Meanwhile, SpaceX Crew-6 astronauts aboard the ISS are scheduled to depart the station aboard the Crew Dragon Endeavour spacecraft no earlier than September 1, depending on the weather at splashdown sites off the Florida coast. SpaceX launched 22 second-generation Starlink Internet satellites atop a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida on Sunday, August 27. About eight and a half minutes later, the rocket's first stage returned to Earth for a landing on the SpaceX drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, marking the third landing for this particular booster. The upper stage continued its journey and eventually deployed all 22 satellites into low Earth orbit about 65 minutes after launch. It was a milestone mission for SpaceX, bringing the total number of Starlink satellites the company has lofted to date to over 5,000.
Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.